Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about why Linux hasn't gone mainstream. Now, I've talked about this before on the podcast with either Martin or Ricky. And really, I think my opinion hasn't changed much, but I thought I'd make a video about it because every so often I get asked, why don't you think more people use Linux? And there are many reasons why Linux hasn't gone mainstream. And I guess... Before we jump into it, we should talk about what going mainstream would really entail. I think when people think mainstream, they think that it would compete with Windows, like have the same kind of market share, which is ridiculous because Windows has like 85, 86% market share. There's going to be no competing with that. It's just never going to happen. But when I think about mainstream, I think uh, people know what Linux is. If you walk up to an average person on the street and say, hey, do you know what Linux is? They'd say yes. That's when Linux has made it. And I think in order to get to that point, there are several things that obviously need to happen. But I think the biggest thing is that Linux is too hard to install. Now, for you or me, the people who watch this channel, you're probably saying like, Matt, you're dumb. Linux is easy to install. I mean, even Arch is easy to install for the most part. I mean, if you can follow instructions. But for people who don't watch this channel, I mean, for your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or any Luddite out there who doesn't really know what they're doing with it, for those people who use computers as just methods of getting work done, not for enjoyment, who aren't interested in learning the ins and outs of how computers work, Linux is too hard to install. If I went up to my mom, my mom's, I don't know, 76 years old now. If I walked up to her and said, hey, burn this ISO onto a USB key, she first asked me what a USB key is, uh, or a USB, a USB drive is. She'd ask me what a USB drive would be too if I used the, you know, the other term for it. And then she'd want to know what an ISO is, and then she'd want to know why, or maybe she'd want to know why first, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, there'd be all these questions, because she wouldn't know how to do it, that is the point. is For everyone who uses Linux, taking an ISO and burning it or whatever, or transferring it onto a USB drive is a simple task. It's not hard. You can use Etcher, you can use, you know, whatever. You could use DD if you wanted to, if, you know, take your life in your own hands. But for normal people, for normies, as Luke Smith would say, uh, that's not a simple task because they don't even know that that is a thing that has to happen. If you ask them to install Windows, they would probably still have just as much of a hard time, but it'd be easy for them to overcome that hurdle because it's just a matter of getting into your settings and, you know, hitting you know, reinstall or whatever, or going to the Microsoft website and following the four steps it takes to download the installer. And then the installer just does it for you. You don't have to go through and burn the ISO. You don't even see the term ISO anywhere. I mean, you can obviously find a Windows ISO, but you wouldn't be installing it that way because you're already on Windows. So in order for Linux to go mainstream or to even become more popular, it has to become easier to install. And it has to get past this whole, let's add in these steps where you have to download an ISO. You have to figure out, I mean, let's just pause there for a second. Every distro you have out there, out there, every distro has like five ISOs to download. Ubuntu itself has the LTS from 2018. I think you can download. It has the most recent one that came out in October. It has, you know, the last LTS, which is 2004. You know, you can download all these things. And that's just Ubuntu. You, same thing, every single flavor of Ubuntu has the same amount of downloads. Mint has three downloads, I think. as Cinnamon, XFCE, and LMD, right? Uh, if you go to the Arch page, the Arch page has a ton of different ISOs on it, and they're confusing because they're all in, like, you press the download button, you get this gigantic page of mirrors and stuff, and, I mean, you'd have to know what a mirror is, first of all. I mean, new people aren't going to be installing Arch anyways, but they're all kind of like this, and you go to Manjaro, Manjaro is more user noob-friendly, and they have three 
main ISOs, and they have like nine or ten community editions. Which one are you supposed to choose? So even just choosing an ISO, if you can get past the idea of knowing what an ISO is, is hard. And then once you've chosen the hopefully the appropriate ISO for you, you've chosen one that makes sure it's you know works on your processor. You know, because you didn't download the ARM version or something, maybe. Then you have to know how to get that onto a USB key that actually works and will, you know, is appropriate. And then there's the whole check sum thing where you have to make sure the, th the the ISO that you've downloaded is proper and stuff. I mean, nobody knows how to do that. I mean, no normal people know even why you should have to do that. You don't have to do that with Windows. I mean, maybe you should have to do it with Windows, but you don't have to. The... Then the, the whole, if you can manage to get it onto a, a USB key, then you have to deal with BIOS and figuring out how to, you know, if you're going to use UEFI or if you're going to have to disable secure boot or you know, whatever. I mean, that's just an entirely hard and stupid mess that you don't have to deal with if you're installing Windows because Windows is certified for whatever and it will work just out of the box. If you're installing Windows, actually, if you already have Windows on your computer, well, you go into the settings and you can, you know, reset it to a, pre, you know, factory defaults. It's done right there. You don't have to do any, you know, burning or whatever. If you're installing, if you have already have Windows, but you download it from the web, they have their own installer. It's just, it goes through and downloads stuff and then it reboots your computer and installs and boots you right into the installer. There's no extraneous stuff. Now, obviously, there's ways that you can download the Windows ISO and have to put it on a on a USB key and do it, you know, the way you do it with Windows. So that, you know, but they've made it so easy to install if you've had to install. But most people, I mean, we talk, I mean I've been talking about having to install Windows. Most people, the vast majority of people will never install Windows because it just comes pre-installed. That's the hurdle that Linux kind of has to to you know, get towards. And I think the solution to that is more hardware that comes with Linux pre-installed. Because then you don't have to deal with any of this stuff. You just have, you know, a Dell or whatever comes with Ubuntu or you have a Pinebook, you know, or whatever. For people who are, may maybe have heard of, about Linux and don't know any of this stuff, what is the Linux community to do? Ideally, if you wanted to go through and install Linux, there'd be a script or something that, you, not even a script, like a, a program that you download from the distribution you've chosen, from the website of the distribution you've chosen. You hit a few keys, it would download a script in the background, you wouldn't even see it. It would ask you to reboot, and then as you boot back up, it'd take you right into the installer. There'd be, there'd be no ISOs, there'd be no dealing with UEFI or choosing how to boot into the boot menu. There's, there'd be none of that stuff. It'd work exactly the same way as installing Windows would if you already had Windows installed. That's That'd be the idea. Now, technologically, I don't know that it's possible because UE, UEFI and Secure Boot and all those kind of things are hard enough to get around, you know, manually, you know, if you know what you're doing. Doing it automated, you know, in an automatic way, you know, I don't know that it's possible. I don't know enough about coding to, you know, know that it's possible, but I think that'd be the ideal solution because then if somebody learns about what Linux is, they could go through and, you know, download this thing from the internet, hit a few buttons, it reboots, reboots you, boots you into the installer, and you install it. Because once... Once you've gotten past the whole, you know, ins ISO and USB key thing and the UE UEFI and all that stuff, once you've booted into the installer, it's easy. Anybody can do it. Uh, for most distros, obviously. Y you get to the text-based, terminal-based installers. Those are a little bit different. But, you know, if you're Ubuntu or Mint or Manjaro or anything that uses Calamari's, it's very easy. And there's... I mean, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, it's just going to install. It's that hurdle of getting people to download an ISO and burning it that I that that's the thing that real for me 
that I really think is holding Linux back. And I know that's a really specific thing. I mean, obviously, there are so many other things we could talk about. We could talk about how Linux doesn't do any marketing because, you know, there's not Ubuntu commercials on the TV, you know, or they're not buying Google ads for Ubuntu laptops or whatever. I mean, so there are other problems preventing Linux to, from going mainstream. But I think the biggest technological hurdle is the installation. So that's just what I want to talk about today really briefly. Personally, I don't think that Linux will ever go above 3 or 4% in terms of market share. And I don't think that that's a big deal. I think for the most part, as long as it doesn't tank, you know, like you know, everybody stops using it, then we'll be perfectly fine. And there's also the idea that maybe we don't want it to go to 20, 30, or 40% market share because then it'll be more targeted towards malware and all that stuff. But those arguments, you know, are kind of mute because we're never going to get there. It's just not going to happen. Now, obviously, in the enterprise space, in terms of servers and stuff, Linux is already there. It's be it's one. Like all the supercomputers in the world, they run Linux. So maybe if everything was a supercomputer, we'd want to use Linux. So anyways, that is it for this video. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast, on Facebook at the Linux Cast. You can also follow us on Odyssey. The link is in the video description. For some reason, I have like three Linux Cast channels on Odyssey and Library. I will link in the video description the, the appropriate one. Hopefully, this video will be automatically transferred over there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do that manually. I don't know how it works. I'm just getting dipping my toes into that. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And with that in mind, I would like to thank our patrons, Devon, Marcus, and Merrick. Thanks for the support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.